Finance Bill 2023 was finally tabled before the National Assembly last week. The bill comes after a lot of speculation by taxpayers and speeches or promises from government officials. The bill has been met with backlash from many quarters, as it is expected to increase the tax burden. In this week's episode of the briefing, we speak to Nerito Moraithi, former Laikipia governor, to get his perspective on Kenya's fiscal dilemma. Tax proposal that, that will increase the cost of living is the increment on uh, VAT on fuel and uh, petroleum products. Uh, currently at 8%, the proposal is to take it to 15%. What that means is that the, the cost of the Buddha Buddha ride will go up. You know, the cost of uh, Matatu fare will go up. The cost of transportation will go up. All prices will actually go up because of that one act. And when you recall that petrol prices are already high because of global issues, um, it seems really uncaring for government then to add fuel, I mean, add, add, add uh, insult to injury uh, by increasing uh, that, that, that cost. Secondly, um, most Kenyans are in the informal sector. I think at the last count, something like 16 million of us, we operate in the informal sector. To target the informal sector with taxes, government is proposing to increase, or the regime, I should say, is proposing to increase turnover tax to 3%. Now, I want you to, to keep in mind, turnover is a direct cost. You see, it's not, it's, not a, it's not tax on profit. It doesn't matter whether you make a profit or not. As soon as you have sold 5,000 or 10,000, then you are liable to pay uh, the 3%. Um, and when you recall that many of our small, in micro and small businesses do in fact fail, so you are only again, as I said, adding insult to injury. And thirdly, the regime is proposing to introduce a 3% uh, housing levy, that you contribute 3%, your employer contributes 3%. And that um, has come under very heavy criticism, firstly because funds in this country have a history of abuse. Uh, one recalls the history of NSSF and the corruption that has bedeviled NNSF, uh, even things like the Youth Fund and so on. Um, number two, it is going to turn out being discriminatory because there are many, many Kenyans who are not necessarily in need of a house, either because they have one already or the circumstance in which they live. Um, yeah. And finally, the, the real problem with housing is one uh, lack of mortgage finance, which means that many people build or buy houses using short-term money. And secondly, the construction costs or the cost of construction materials. And uh, none of that is being addressed. As a matter of fact, the proposed increase in taxation of cement clinker will only make the building materials more expensive. So the housing fund solves none of the problems. It only creates additional problems and seems to open yet another avenue uh, for corruption. So of course Kenyans are angry. And if you recall that uh, this regime came uh, into office partly uh, by promising Kenyans that they would be really focused on the bottom of the pyramid, uh, none of these proposals uh, are doing anything for the bottom of the pyramid except punishing the hustler, punishing the mama boga, punishing the Buddha Buddha. Most of us have observed, I would say, a, a very strong contradictions within the budget policy statement and, and generally within government policy. It could be that the key economic managers are not seeing eye to eye. It could also be that their boss is not listening to them, whatever it is. Um, so you end up with contradictions like this. On the one hand, the regime says, we are not going to subsidize consumption. We are going to focus on production. 
So we are not going to give you subsidies for the fuel. We are not going to, we are going to give you subsidized fertilizer. But as soon as they say that, uh, as, and they say we are doing that in order to encourage production, then as soon as they say that, they turn around and create measures that are going to frustrate production. Because for example, agriculture, you have to plow. When you plow, you are using diesel. That diesel is going to become more expensive now. When you are going to harvest, you may use a machine. For example, if you are harvesting wheat, you are going to use a machine. If you have been irrigating, you are going to use uh, fuel. Yeah. By increasing the cost of fuel, it goes directly to hurt the very production that the regime is saying it is trying to support. Um, so that contradiction could be the left hand not talking to the right hand, or it could be that there is in fact internal infighting in the regime. Whatever the reason, the outcome is confused uh, economic policy. The outcome is a punitive, um, is a punitive uh, uh, finance bill. We'll give you a couple of other examples of contradiction. The regime says they know the problem with debt is short-term domestic debt because it was as much as 25% of the total stock of domestic debt. And of course, short-term debt is usually more expensive. So they need to get out of that. But on the other hand, they are increasing interest rates, which means as they redeem this uh, debt, when they contract new debt, they are contracting at higher and higher cost. So the total amount of debt service will actually increase. It will not reduce. Because the treasury bills that you had, say one year treasury bills that you sold a year ago, were two percentage points of interest lower than the, treasur um, the treasury bills, or uh, 90, uh, 100, one year treasury bills you are selling now. So you are contracting more expensive debt and retiring cheaper debt. Why would you do such a thing? Uh, thirdly, you say you want to bring down the cost of living. You also admit the main drivers of inflation in Kenya are food costs and fuel costs. So those would be the ones you would need to do something about. Now, even if you increase interest rates by whatever percent, we still have to eat. We still will require fuel to move the food around and to go to school and to do other things. So the action of increasing interest rates in order to try and contain inflation is contradictory because the, the sources of the inflation are external, meaning fuel costs, and food, meaning drought. So even if you increase the interest rates, it doesn't uh, eliminate drought. In fact, it makes it more expensive uh, because you know farmers require seasonal credit. So you want us to increase food production, but the money we are going to borrow in order to plant is going to be uh, very, very expensive. Mm. Yeah? The fuel that we are going to use in our farming operations is going to be very, very expensive. So what you are seeing is a lot of contradiction. Um, we don't know the reasons why, but the effect is the same. Uh, Kenyans, particularly at the bottom of the pyramid, are suffering because of it. The options are clear, and as I have said publicly before, I am not convinced that our colleagues who are on that side, who are in the government side, um, that they don't know the answers. After all, quite a number of them were, was, were, were in similar positions during the Kibaki regime, in perhaps the first part of Jubilee. I mean, just to illustrate, the CS for Treasury now was a central bank governor in Kibaki time. So he knows exactly what was done 
in order to manage the economy properly. As I've said previously publicly before, the president himself was uh, first of all a member of parliament in Kibaki regime. He was also cabinet secretary or minister at that time uh, for agriculture. So, so the key players have been there before. Um, now why they are not doing the right thing is, is anybody's guess. What is the right thing first? We have to reduce expenditure. Now, in the government uh, or in the documents, you will see something called fiscal consolidation. That's what they're talking about. Mm. Everybody accepts we have to live within our means. But we are not, the regime is not walking the talk. The budget for this year was 3.2 trillion. The proposed budget for next year is 3.6 trillion. If we were having problems, at 3.2, we'll have even bigger problems at 3.6. You should reduce the 3.2, perhaps to 2.6 or 2.5. How? First, avoid duplication. There are many, many instances where the national government is trying to do the same things that counties are doing. This is wasteful and it creates double bureaucracy for no purpose in health, in water, in roads, in all sectors, government, national government, is duplicating the functions that have already been devolved by the constitution to counties. Mm. I estimate you could save up to about 140 billion shillings, between 100 and 140 billion shillings, by avoiding duplication. To be specific, I give you two, two quick examples. Um, the Ministry of Health, its budget has doubled over the last four or five years. From about 60 billion to now 130 billion. What are the things that health tries to do? The Ministry of Health is trying, for example, to build level three hospitals within counties, which is a 100% county function. That construction will be supervised by officers who are coming from the Ministry of Health. So, you know, you are going to Mandera or Baringo or West Pokot, you want to build a small level hospital. The contracting and so on is being done in Nairobi. The supervision costs alone. Yet the county has a whole bureaucracy and infrastructure to do that. So it's very wasteful. And that is in every single sector. You could save between 100 and 140 billion shillings by removing duplication. Number two, the criticism of the uh, Jubilee regime was that there was too, the, the, uh, too much expenditure on infrastructure using borrowed money. Okay? Now that budget for big ticket infrastructure is somewhere around 370 this year and proposed to go to about 400 billion. You could bring it back down to the levels of four or five years ago. So you could bring it down to 250 billion. Yeah? So reducing by about 150 billion. And you should focus on rural roads and vo low volume seals, uh, seal roads, which are the ones that are aligned with increasing agricultural productivity. Number three, bring down recurrent expenditure. Right now, proposed at 2.6 trillion, up from uh, one point eight trillion just uh, three or four years ago. By doing what? Zero base budgeting. Every item in the budget should be justified from scratch. The way budgeting is being done today is that if travel costs were 20 million in your section last year, then this year they are going to be 22 million. Without asking the question, do you actually need to travel? And for what reason? Maybe this year there are no projects you are supervising. Why are you traveling? And that's why you see, towards the end of the year, uh, people create all kinds of... Uh, so, zero base. if you dial back recurrent expenditure, you could release a further uh, four, perhaps to even 500 uh, 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 billion. Fourthly, as I already explained, you need lower interest rates. Because... Unless you do so, 
the total amount of debt service is only increasing. Of, of domestic debt service will only be higher with this subsequent year. If you, right now, treasury bills at uh, nearly 11%. If you bring them down to two, perhaps 3%, then you will see you will be saving about 100 billion mm. in, in just, so you could shave off nearly six, 700 billion by just doing the right things. It is our right as Kenyans to participate vigorously in, in public debate and, and, in, and, and public participation is required um, by law, encouraged by law. So wherever you are as a Kenyan, I encourage you to engage your member of parliament, particularly on these tax proposals, and to make your voice heard and heard strongly. Um, and not just for the finance bill, to stay engaged with it. But on this particular instance, Kenyans need to speak out and tell the regime, you must style up. I mean, we cannot possibly continue in this particular um, direction. And it is practical to do so. It's practical for this regime to present a more coherent budget that is not trying to tax us uh, for, you know, uh, to beyond what is practical.